order to say that a person has really nailed an accent, they have to be able to hit the bullseye for every word in every sentence. But what does that bullseye actually look like close up? Is it a crisp edged dot, or actually more of a fuzzy circle? Vera is a highly popular British crime drama series in which the title character, DCI Stanhope, investigates murders in her native region of Tyneside. Listen to how she pronounces DNA profile. To get your DNA profile, the DNA profile, DNA, DNA, DNA profile, pro, 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 profile. Sounds legit, right? But it doesn't conform to what we'd expect to hear coming out of the mouth of people who grew up in the northeast of England, especially in women of her age group. A recent field study found this diphthongal pronunciation of the so-called face and goat vowels to be quite rare among her demographic. The consistency of the character's pronunciation throughout the series suggests she isn't falling out of the accent. Compare it with the monophthongs fellow actor Kathleen Cranham uses in her response. Okay. Innovative trends in accents have been observed to often originate in younger women, but data from the same study found that even among that demographic, diphthongs in these types of words are still quite unusual there. So what is going on here? Although viewers' reactions to her attempt at a Northeastern English accent were mixed, Brenda Blethyn, the Kent native who plays DCI Stanhope, claims that her driver got into an argument with the taxi driver who insisted that the actress, like him, was actually from the North. But why would someone who's actually from the area be more convinced by her accent than someone like me, who isn't from the region? Well, no two people speak exactly the same way. Neighbors that have lived in the same village all their lives will have their differences in the way they speak. And the same is true for twins who have grown up together in the same house. Of course, there are many shared features that will link them to a time and place, but it's a fact worth remembering if you are researching an accent for a main character. Of course, there are what are often called stage accents, which are staple go-tos for productions that need to point to a minor character's origin, like a flashing neon arrow. There are many documented examples of actors actually from the same place their character is supposed to be from, who after giving their nuanced and well-rehearsed renditions of one or two lines of script, have been outraged by the director asking them to sound more like someone from that place. In other words, sound more like what that director, on behalf of the latent audience, expect the accent to sound like. On the other hand, when it comes to main or recurring characters, the accent developed should be determined by several factors, including the places they have lived in, especially during their formative years, tempered by the majority accent they're surrounded by in a place in which they've settled their group affiliations, which can include race, ethnicity, and socioeconomic status, their generation, accents inevitably change over time, being influenced by local and neighboring populations in flux, as well as, from the 20th century onwards, by the media. The level of education they've reached, being influenced to some degree by fellow students from other backgrounds, whether consciously or subconsciously, either through a desire to conform or be understood better by others, or by adopting accent features they find desirable or more prestigious. Aside from all of these, a fully formed character, much like yourself, a real person, doesn't speak in exactly the same way all the time. The setting and the people to whom one is speaking will determine not only their register and grammar, but also a subconscious shift along an accent continuum we all have, but may not be fully aware of. However, there are other factors that come into play when a character is forged for the stage or screen, and directors and producers will often have a hand in this. In the case of Vera, Blathin said... I had to soften it, of course, for overseas sales. And like Vera, many productions are created with an international audience in mind. And when it comes to the chances of a show being picked up for distribution by a network or a movie doing well at the box office, accessibility wins over authenticity every time. Right. What did he say? He said, as you say, Jeremy, only top and down because he couldn't see the view no more. What's he Well, 
almost every time. So it appears that getting an accent right isn't so much like hitting the bullseye with each arrow, but more like navigating a path across a field with the least number of miles. I hope this video has dispelled another accent myth for you. If you liked this one, share it around, and don't forget to subscribe for subsequent episodes. Bye till next time.